I got some powdered sweet paprika at the grocery store, so I decided to try a succulent extraction of sweet paprika using ethanol as my solvent. About 35 grams of the powdered sweet paprika have been uh, rolled up in a coffee filter and placed in the Soxlet extraction chamber. This will be the first uh, cycle of extraction. Obviously the extract is a nice brownish orange color and there it goes. And it's turned the ethanol in the boiling flask a nice orange color. I'll pick up the video again at the fifth extraction cycle. This is cycle five, about to siphon. Now, as you can see, I added some clear glass marbles to the top of uh, the extraction chamber to hold everything down and in place. My uh, cotton swab was trying to float up, so the marbles are holding everything down and together. As we can see, after cycle number five, the paprika is starting to fade slightly in the filter paper, but there's still plenty more to extract from this uh, paprika. This is cycle 10 of the Soxlet extraction of powdered sweet paprika by ethanol. The extract is still a good yellow-orange color at cycle 10, but the paprika itself in the filter paper is slowly starting to fade in color. I'll pick up the video again at cycle number 20 of the extraction. This is cycle 20 of the Soxlet extraction of uh, powdered sweet paprika using ethanol. We can see that the uh, extract is a lighter color. It's a yellow-orange now rather than a deep orange-brown. And the paprika in the extraction chamber is uh, fading steadily in color, although it's still giving a good extract. I'll pick up the video again at cycle number 30. This is cycle number 30 of the Soxlet extraction of sweet paprika powder using ethanol. The sweet paprika is quite faded in the filter paper now, although it is still giving uh, an orange-yellow extract that's much fainter, of course, than cycle number one. If we look down in the boiling flask, our uh, collected extract down there is a nice deep orange-brown color, so I'm definitely getting something here. I'll probably let this go five to ten more cycles and then stop it for time reasons. This is cycle number 35. There, it's now siphoning. As we can see in the boiling flask, we have a nice dark colored extract, and for time reasons, I'm going to stop here at cycle number 35 and switch over to simple distillation to recover the bulk of my ethanol. I've set up for simple distillation, and I'm now recovering uh, the majority of my ethanol from uh, the extract. 
and getting it back into uh, a 500 milliliter collection flask. I'll leave about 20 or 30 milliliters in the boiling flask just so that the extract remains liquid enough for me to pour it out. I'll pick up the video at that point. After distilling off most of the ethanol from my extract, I was left with the 40 milliliters in total that I put into this 100 milliliter beaker, and I'm now going to boil it down to about 10 milliliters or so, and that will be my product. Here's the result of my Soxlid extraction of sweet paprika powder using ethanol. I've reduced the contents of the beaker from about 40 milliliters down to about 10. This is now ready for me to put in a storage bottle and use. Here's a quick look at my larger still for producing the ethanol that I use for my Soxlid extractions. What I have is a five-gallon steel pail that uh, has a non-removable top. To that I added on a 30-inch tall brass reflux column, which then goes over to this one-gallon paint can that you can see here that contains uh, the condenser coil and uh, Water's pumped into the bottom of the paint can and uh, leaves via a brass tube and then some hose on the top. As we can see, ethanol is being steadily recovered here. We can see it dripping out the end of the condenser pipe and collecting in a 500 milliliter beaker. From this particular batch I've already extracted 850 milliliters into another container and now I've got already more than 300 milliliters more. I periodically catch a drop on a glass rod and light it with a lighter to make sure that it is in fact uh, largely ethanol and I haven't switched over to just getting water. To get the mash that I'm distilling in the big still I just showed, I took a five gallon pail and um, sterilized it out, put in about four gallons of water, about five pounds of sugar, and some yeast. Let it ferment for about a week and that produced the mash that I'm getting my ethanol from. That ethanol run produced a fair bit of crude ethanol. I completely filled the one liter boiling flask on the left and half filled the uh, 500 milliliter boiling flask on the right. Of course this ethanol will have to be redistilled to clean it up, purify it, and eliminate the water that came over in the first distillation, but it's still pretty good. Thanks for watching, and as always, there'll be plenty more to come.